Section 17, Conveyors. General. Inspection, maintenance, and repair shall be performed in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations by a qualified person. The entire system shall be visually inspected daily before startup. Conveyor equipment shall be used to convey only those materials for which it was designed and within the rated capacities and speeds. Conveyors shall be properly grounded before use and all connections, switches, and cables shall conform to the National Electrical Code. No maintenance shall be performed when a conveyor is in operation except for the following. If lubrication is to be done while the conveyor is in motion, lubrication points shall be accessible through guard openings which are small enough that fingers cannot reach the hazardous locations, and only trained personnel who are aware of the hazards of the conveyor in motion shall be allowed to lubricate a conveyor that is operating, and when adjustments or maintenance is required while the conveyor is in operation, only trained personnel who are aware of the hazards shall be permitted to make the adjustment or maintenance. If guards need to be removed for the adjustment or maintenance, the conveyor must be locked out prior to removing the guards. Safety Devices On all conveyors where reversing or runaway are potential hazards or the effects of gravity create a potential for hazardous uncontrolled lowering, anti-runaway devices, brakes, backstops, or other safeguards shall be installed to protect persons from injury and property from damage. Safety devices shall be arranged to operate in such a manner that if power failure or failure of the device occurs, a hazardous condition would not result. Safety devices shall be designed to prevent the conveyor from restarting until the safety device is manually reset. All exposed moving machinery parts that present a hazard shall be mechanically or electrically guarded or guarded by location. Note, in the absence of a guard specifically erected to protect personnel, warnings shall be provided to restrict unauthorized personnel from entering such hazardous areas. Whenever conveyors pass adjacent to or over work areas, roadways, highways, railroads, or other public passageways, protective guards shall be installed. The guards shall be designed to catch and hold any load or material that may fall off or become dislodged from the system. Operating controls. Emergency stop buttons shall be red in color, easily identifiable, and readily accessible. Emergency stop buttons shall not be protected with collars or other devices which might make it difficult to activate. Starting controls shall be green in color and protected from accidental activation. All controls shall be clearly labeled to identify their function. Counterweights. When counterweights are supported by belts, cables, chains, or similar means, the weights shall be confined in an enclosure to prevent the presence of personnel beneath the counterweight, or the arrangement shall provide a means to restrain the falling weight in case of failure under normal counterweight support. When counterweights are attached to lever arms, they shall be securely fastened. When two or more conveying systems are interfaced, special attention shall be given to the interfaced area to ensure the presence of adequate guarding and safety devices. Hoppers and chutes. All openings to the hopper and chutes shall be guarded to prevent persons from accidentally stepping into them. If guards are not practical, warning signs shall be posted. Mobile conveyors. Mobile conveyors shall be provided with brakes or other position locking devices for each degree of motion where movement could present a hazard. 
Mobile conveyors shall be designed to be stationary against runaway and stable against overturning under normal conditions of operation. When an operator is required on a mobile conveyor, a platform or cab shall be provided for his or her protection. Portable conveyors. The raising and lowering mechanism for the boom of a portable conveyor shall be provided with a safety device that will hold the boom at any rated angle of inclination. Portable conveyors shall be stable so that the conveyor will not topple when used with the manufacturer's rating and in a manner in which it was intended or when being moved. Screw conveyors. Screw conveyors shall not be operated unless the conveyor housing completely encloses the conveyor moving elements and power transmission guards are in place, except that if the conveyor must have an open housing as a condition of use, the entire conveyor shall then be guarded by railing, fence, or by location. Feed openings for shovel, front end loader, or other manual or mechanical equipment shall be constructed in such a way that the conveyor screw is covered by grating. If the nature of the material is such that grating cannot be used, then the exposed section of the conveyor shall be guarded by a railing and warning signs shall be posted. Operations Audible Alarm When a conveyor that could cause injury when started is automatically controlled, or must be controlled from a remote location, an audible warning device shall be provided. The device shall be clearly audible at all points along the conveyor where personnel may be present. The warning device shall be activated by the controller device that starts the conveyor and shall continue for a period of time before the conveyor starts. A flashing light or similar visual warning shall be used with the audible device. Training. Only trained personnel shall be permitted to operate a conveyor. Training shall include instruction in operation under normal conditions and in emergencies. Riding on conveyors is prohibited. Personnel working with or near a conveyor shall be instructed as to the location and operation of pertinent stopping devices and prohibited from wearing loose or baggy clothing, jewelry, or long hair. Only trained personnel shall track a conveyor belt that must be done while the conveyor is operating.